Well folks, welcome back to the workshop. A few Bosch hammers here on for a pair, so I thought I'd do a wee tool repair a thon if I won them. It's a wild, wet and miserable day here at the minute. And a lot of builders won't be able to get outside and do very much, so a wee bit of spare time. Sometimes you just drop on all the machines and need to get fixed. So I've ended up with a few Bosch hammers. I've got this here Bosch 5, another newer Bosch 5, a Bosch 8 and a Bosch 11E. All on for a pair, so... We'll do a video here, fix them all up, or see which of them we can fix up. And we'll start off with this Bosch 5, it's a GBH 5-38D. What's this one doing? If she's making the right sounds. These ones generally, that's going to be the hammer. Yeah, it's lost its hammer. She's running, more than likely she's rotating. She's just not hammering. So that's going to be a service. Got a few of these through in limited time, so I'm going to spend less time talking and more time just getting on with it. Halfway worn. So they're not far off needing to replace it anyway. So we'll just put on a full service kit. generally have oil inside the gearbox. That was super tight. Yeah, she's not worn on too bad. Plenty of life left on it. That bearing's gone. This looks okay. Leave that side. So now to focus on this. Trying to keep this top section closed for now, just to keep the oil inside. This is where the mass is going to start. Full of black oil. This particular model of Bosch 
doesn't use grease this is oil black oil so pour some of this out first before we get it all over the bench it'll help to a degree but it's still gonna make a mess Heat makes it a bit easier. So there's that seal there. A steel seal ring that sticks. Generally, if this gets a knock at all, it makes it very tight to get it out. There's our problem. Same as always, this has been sitting too far forward for too long, the o-ring's gone anyway so it doesn't have much compression, you see the ring marks where it's been locked onto the hammer pipe and these wee holes here that was stuck in position so it was running but this wasn't coming back and forth she was just jammed up. To do a quick fix you just replace that and the o-ring and the piston that'll get it hammering again but condition of this here oil the amount of work this thing's done we're just going to put a service kit onto it so that'll just keep everything running right also check the needle bearings it's just a steel bush that's fine we might get away with that oil seal it doesn't look too bad Everything else now just needs to be cleaned. And as always, if you're doing a quick repair job on this, you just want to change the parts you need if you want to keep the cost down. Just replace the O-rings and seals you need to. If you're not putting the whole service kit onto it, don't pull out that there red seal once it comes out it's not going to go back in again it'll expand and stretch and it'll kink whenever you try to put it back in create an oil leak so if you don't want to spend extra money don't take it out you won't have to replace it unless it's already damaged obviously but if you have to replace that and the set of brushes and the o-rings and the piston and striker you're onto the price of a service kit anyway you may as well just buy a service kit but just to get the compression back you just need to replace them two o-rings and the piston and striker alone will get you up and running again for a short time. Okay, the needle bearings didn't even make it under the parts washer. Totally fallen apart. So they're gone. So if they're gone, this thing must have more work done than I thought. So as well, we'll also just change the oil seals. One's at the front. And the one on here. Obviously, new needle bearings as well. And the service kit that's the main one that's the one you need for this hammer now because this 538d uses an oil instead of grease it protects the gears really really well so even though this machine is what well, 2017 actually, six or seven years work done. The gears are still perfect. You go to the newer Bosch five stroke forties, they'll have a grease in it instead of an oil. The grease can get thrown around the inside and away from the gears. So if you're only using it for short bursts, and the thing never gets heated up, the grease never solidifies back into the gears. It means it can run dry sometimes or over time, once you start getting a lot of use, the grease can start to dry up and get harder and start sticking to the side and completely missing the gears, which will eventually cause the gears on the armature to wear out. So you'll get these in running, sounding perfect, but not doing a thing because the gears are actually gone. They'll be stripped out completely and they'll not be driving anything. These older ones with the oil don't seem to have the same problem. The downside of that is they're an absolute torture to clean. So. I spent about 20 or 30 minutes 
washing this all out in the parts washer. After that, I actually filled up a tub full of paint thinners and washed them all again. The oil is that good, it's like tacky or sticky. Even when you wash it with kerosene, it still leaves an oily residue on it. You can't get it fully clean, so, so you need a bit of thinners then to actually clean it out completely. Bit of a torture, but very good for the machine. Only downside is, generally, oil will cause the o-rings to expand a little bit. So they'll actually wear out a little bit quicker. So, so you'll be servicing one of these machines with the oil a wee bit more often than a machine with grease in it. But even if it has grease, you still want to open it up and check it every once in a while. Give it a top up if it needs it. Now, I'll just get on with this one and get it rebuilt again with a new service kit. Of the tool holder first. Plenty of grease down in there. I'll rebuild the striker pan. It's the wider open C clip that goes under here, holds all that down. And use your hammer then, put it on upside down without the o-ring on it. And use that. To locate the C clip. Should be able to see it clipped on down here. The C clip shouldn't be halfway up or up near the top, it has to be all the way down to the bottom. Let's go ahead and fit this o ring, there's a black o ring on the hammer. Grease in there, and we'll leave that ready to go. Set that to one side. I'll just replace these seals now over on the vise. My sound changed. Like that and a big washer. There we go. I'll just stick this on as well. Leave the hammer pipe ready to go. Just get the top ready now. These are an exact fit. 
So once they're old and used, or you pull them out, they just expand that little bit and they never sit right again. Now, I wasn't going to change this, but seeing as that needle bearing's worn out, more than likely this will be worn out as well. I'll just replace it now. Plenty of grease in there. And on for these needle bearings. That's the number of the needle bearing if you ever need it. Before we go any further with that, we just get the motor back together as well. So otherwise, if I go too far, I'll have to put grease on. we we'll just pour out that open hole. So we need to get that on here before we can finish that. I also need to replace this bearing, 628. Touch your lock tight wouldn't hurt.
pattern. Everything in Greece, including his gears, isn't all that essential. Just make sure you get the bearings. Because it's actually going to take an oil instead of a grease. Everything's going to get quickly coated anyway, whenever it's poured on. This is the awkward butt. Keep your selector ring here all the way forward. And your piston. Drop them all on together. And just keep that forward so that the shim doesn't interfere with the hammer pipe whenever it's been pushed on. But a grease wouldn't do any harm. And I'm wrong there. Just back to front. Should be that way. The plastic sleeve should be down here at the bottom, up near the tool holder. Slide that on. Get your piston on first. Coming on far enough, the hammer pipe will be past the shim. Slide that back so you can twist your tool holder. Slide that into position. And then before you put on your seal, make sure these two little notches line up. And you can squeeze it on. I've forgotten. There's this bearing plate that needs to be on. If that's not on, that bearing will be sitting down too far. And what will happen? As the fan on the armature will actually rub on the air deflector inside. So without that, the armature is actually sitting too far down. Put that on, it pushes the armature up, gives it the clearance it needs. Now the oil, it's Bosch mineral oil. And it's 50 mil. Check your selector. It's in the same position as your lever, which is hammer mode here. And drop that on. Nearly there now. Don't be 
think that. Tool holder grease on your pans. That's her. One Bosch hammer, a new service kit, seals and grease. <laughs> Most important thing, this does she hammer. Nice one. That's her. Ready to go. One Bosch GBH5 stroke 38D. Up and running again for the wee service. Next up is the 5 Bosch hammer for the GBH5 stroke 40DE instead of the 538D. This is basically the same as the last one. I think it's a younger machine, but in this case it's actually older. This is from 2006. Basically, the exact same machines. Same piston, same striker, same hammer bolt here, same clutch. All the components up in here are basically the same. Only difference really is in the motor and the handle. So, a little bit bigger in the motor, but the main advantage is the handle. is actually this part here. She's spring-loaded, so if there's more vibration control than this. Plus she's pivoted here, the other one's just a fixed handle. Plus it has the newer tool holder as well, so it actually has stopping devices inside, like a modern hammer, instead of just the wee rollers, like in the last one. But Bosch being Bosch, they don't take out a new one and just get rid of the old one. The old one is still very, very popular and a very good machine, so they still continue to sell that as well as this one. As for now today, I'm pretty sure both of these models now are actually obsolete. They have a newer one again now, which is a 5 stroke 40 DCE or something. A little bit of a different shape up here. This one, not sure what's wrong with it, but it's obviously got a brand new lead. And it's not long fitted. And it wasn't me that fitted it, because it's not my cable. Well, let's see what's wrong with it. Well, she's running. And she's rotating. And again, she's not hammering. Now, this is the same as the last one as well, and that uses oil instead of grease. So the gears should be good in this. But it could need a service also. It's feeling like it anyway. Crack into it and see what it needs. Since this thing's been cleaned out anyway, at least he's putting plenty of chisel grease on it. This one has a fresh set of brushes on it.
they're barely even broken on. And they're the right brushes too, which is always a plus. It's not unusual to get a machine on that's been looked at somewhere else before. And they have the wrong brushes for it. Maybe a different set of brushes just modified. Nothing wrong with that, as long as it's done right. But if they're the wrong brushes, I would sometimes go ahead and put on a service kit so I can fit the right ones. These are the right brushes, so they'll be fine. Out of that. And we get onto this. Now, I'm taking a guess, and that is, that is a service. Could be something else, but either way, I have to get onto here. And this way, I can just leave the motor as one piece anyway. Yeah, I'm going to need to get myself some new circle of pliers. These are just about gone. Now that oil isn't all that bad. But it's going to be worse than that. Drop the rest of that out now since it's already made a mess. Doesn't want to come out. A wee bit of heat will always help. Work quick because that aluminium sucks away the heat very quickly. It's already starting to cool down to the touch. Looks like it's the same problem. There we go. Yeah, same thing. See the dents there, there, and there. She's jammed up inside the hammer pipe. Exact same thing again. Strip it down, clean it out. Not going to fit a service kit on this one because those brushes are fine. I'm going to put on I'm just going to put on the O-rings that I need, the hammer and the piston. Everything else might be okay. We'll just check everything out. We'll wash it all just to check them. Check the needle bearings again as well. I'm going to get this mess cleaned up and get it rebuilt. Right, same crack as the last one. Needle bearings are gone. Falling apart in the parts washer, so they're gone. 
place them. They're worn out. The seals could be worn out. I don't know when this is last serviced or if it was ever serviced at all. I've never had it on the shop before, so just in case we replace the seals. One thing I've been greasing leaking, but if the oil leaks, it makes a hell of a mess. And then seals in for the striker, the bolt, and the piston. And if we're changing them, we'd better just check the bearings. That one's not bad. That one's slack. So replace that. And as we're replacing that one, we'll just replace this one anyway. Change the two of them as a pair. Same bearings as last time. A 628 and a 6201. Like I say, I'm not putting on a full service kit. I already have the brushes, these are brand new, and the seal's still good. M2 parts alone saves me about 35 euro in parts in this repair.
hear the tone change when you get to the bottom. That's it all the way to the bottom. To one side. I'll take us back. Spot check there now. Make sure we're not forgetting anything. I think we're good. That's not on. If you're ever in doubt if it doesn't click in, don't be afraid to give it a little tap. That's better. Just be doubly sure that is locked on. So that C clip comes out when you're running. That's a disaster. I 
the ring's still in place, hasn't warped or swollen. If it lifts out of here and won't sit down, do replace it because whenever you push it down, it just won't sit under the groove anymore and it'll kink off to one side, causing a leak. And whenever you're using oil instead of grease, it'll leak a lot. 50 mil or thereabouts. That's another Bosch hammer serviced. This time, just without a service kit, just using select parts instead. That's her. Another one ready to go. All together, all the parts, labour and vat, for that repair cost about 130 euro. Compare that to the other hammer, it just got a full service kit, plus all the other bits and pieces, seals and bearings and grease. The other hammer cost 160 euro. We're simply not changing the brushes and that seal saves 30 euro. But that only really works if you don't need to replace the brushes. If you're, generally, when they need a service, the brushes will be worn out as well. This one's just happened to have a new set of brushes fitted. And that oil seal was still in place. That's her. Now, next up, we have the next size up Bosch GBH H stroke 45D. What's wrong with this one? This one's not that old. 2020. Oh, doesn't sound good. Red light. She actually got caught up on something, put on the red light. This isn't looking like a cheap repair anyway. Thought it blew a segment out of the armature, but nope. Let's just try that again. Quick turn. 
ja. Gearbox. I don't think this one's going to be worth fixing somehow. And I'll quickly show you why. Oh, just strip it all down just for this. Hear that? And she's jamming there. Stropped one of the teeth of this crank gear. And she's chewed it up more than likely. She's chewed up this. It'll have chewed up the armature gear as well. Potentially. Right, we just have to inspect to see what kind of damage has been done. Surprisingly, the armature is not damaged. The crank is sort of tooth missing. Can't see it from there because it's still in place on top. It's only half the tooth is broken off, so the bottom half is missing. It looks to be just that one. This might have been caught early. Might get away with just replacing this one gear. That's tight. Put a heat again. Not sure if I'll have to service this or not. So I'll just try to keep it clean for now.
There's the broken one. One tooth just nipped off. The problem is, where does the tooth go? That's why this wasn't spinning. Gently it can drop down and end up on here. Just give it a wee clean and find out. Right. No missing teeth on this. Sometimes the tooth that breaks off, or if a few of them break off, can fall down into the clutch and get jammed on here and just beaten onto the actual gear teeth on the clutch, basically micro welding them on. That one looks okay. So that's missing. It's not in these gears. So that means it's somewhere inside of here. There's not much point in changing this. A piece of metal floating around somewhere on here. So everything, including this and the parts, will all have to be washed out in case there's any pieces of debris on them that's going to cause trouble further in the line. Strip all that down. Might change the piston and the strike of o-ring. Everything else should be okay. It's not that old a machine. He's lucky he didn't keep on going. Because if he breaks these gear teeth and kept on going, it'll be broken more. It'll also destroy the gear on top of the armature. That's sure washed out. Ready to go. Hopefully we'll get away with just these three parts. Two O-rings, just in case for the hammer. And one eccentric gear. There's the part number here. You ever have to order one. That's it. One complete kit. Now you can just buy it, this gear on its own, which would be the actual crank on its own on the spindle. It doesn't include this gear, the bracket, nor the needle bearing. But the difference between just buying the gear only, buying the entire eccentric assembly, is about 15 euro. That costs 85 euro for the gear. The entire thing cost 100. And to actually disassemble this, just to replace that gear. Wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world, you have to press it off. You're reusing the old needle bearing, which is expensive to replace on its own, so, so it wouldn't really be advisable to just replace the gear. You're far better off replacing the entire assembly. You're getting a brand new needle bearing with it, so everything's nice and tight. You don't have to worry about that. Plus time. It's a lot quicker and easier to just drop this whole assembly in and get the job done than having to actually strip this apart and rebuild it again. Just adds on extra time that you're really don't want to be spending. Your O-rings, that's the number there. These O-rings are probably fine. It's just to have the machine completely disassembled. So it's more beneficial to just replace them now when you can. They're not an expensive part. But they have an important role. You can just guarantee your hammer is going to have correct compression then. There's a wee touch of grease in that needle bearing too. As soon as you have this all washed out. Grease that would have been on it will have been washed away so just top that up as well.
sure your holes are lined up. Push that on. Just top up that Loctite. So a good bit on it, but just top it up as well. Do not want these backing out. Just make sure they're good and tight. A shoe. One new eccentric gear installed. Now, didn't clean out this because there's no real need. Any debris is generally going to be up around this area. It's very difficult for it to migrate down here. So this should be fine. Just give it a good top up of grease. So it has plenty of compression. This ready. Same as the last ones, these just go on together. Also the same as the last one, make sure you line up this pan with these holes. And make sure that goes on. That's it now. Have a little bit of grease there just to hold these pans on. Don't put on too much. If you put on too much grease, it'll actually make a seal. bottom out and the grease will bottom out on the bottom stopping the pan from going the whole way stopping you from getting that sleeve on just needs a little bit to make sure it's not dry and just to make sure they stay in as you're working on it 
these pans are just so that you can easily change this tool holder if it ever wears out. The keyway is inside of it for holding the chisel for rotation. If they ever wear away from use, you can easily just pop off the chuck, pull out them pans, replace the tool holder without dismantling the whole machine. Before we can put these bolts on to hold these two halves together, we need to put the top cover on. Before we do that, we need to put the grease on. And that's Bosch white grease. And that's 85 mil. Before you put this cover on, don't forget this little plastic insert or just for the two screws in the back handle to actually screw onto. And this cover, when you're putting it on, just make sure this plastic selector actually locates onto this here metal gear. It's your shoulder on the gear that slides into this. You know you're right because if you put it into hammer rotation mode you should be able to turn the tool holder by hand just get a couple of bolts to hold that on and leave it like that for now you just need two to hold it. We're not going to put on this plastic cover just yet. The brushes are still fine. Don't need to replace them. They're still inserted. Next up, I'll just stick this back handle on. Now the reason we're going to put this cover on is so we can actually test to make sure the armature is rotating correctly. Now unlike the two other Bosch 5 hammers, there's no metal plate down here to push this bearing up. So that bearing has to be pressed up. If not, the fan on the armature will rub on this green air deflector. That's the base that actually pushes that's bearing an armature assembly up to clear that air deflector. It's a very tight tolerance, there's not much of a gap. So after you fit the bottom cover, it's just very useful to actually test the armature to make sure everything rotates correctly. You shouldn't be hearing that rubbing at all. If it rubs at all, it'll melt some of the plastic. Once it rubs and melts a little bit, it'll keep melting more and more. Then when the actual hammer stopped, that plastic will solidify and actually jam the armature fan solid against this air deflector, seizing the motor. So it's just handier to leave this cover off, so you can just turn that fan by hand to make sure it's moving freely. Now that it's right, go ahead and finish putting in these bolts. Machine screws up this side. And the last two big bolts, which holds on your top cover, but also holds on the entire gearbox to the motor housing.
and you can throw on your cover. Hopefully, that should be it. She's hammering. Spot on. One Bosch hammer, GBH H stroke 45D. Not very old. Ninth to the fifth, 2021 written on it. That means it'll be just out of the three year warranty, but there was no mention of warranty for this thing, so probably didn't take out the three year. Might have only had the one. But still, obviously, still wanted it fixed up. Part may be expensive, but it's still a lot cheaper than buying a new one of these here. That whole repair costs about 170 euro. That machine costs about eight or 900 euro. So it's well worth fixing it. I'd love to just say that's a one-off, but it's not. That's a recurring problem. Just seems to be something wrong with either this gear or else the way the hammer is running and hitting. There must be back feet or something coming on or some harmonic that's actually causing too much stress to crack off one of them teeth. More than likely I would say it's through the harmonics of it. Whenever she's rotating and hammering there must be some point where the hammer's coming back during the rotation that's causing extra force in them gears. So as you can see They're all breaking at roughly the same spot. Maybe a manufacturing defect, but more than likely, I would say it's true with the way this is actually running. There's more teeth broken on these two here, simply because whenever it broke, the customer kept on running it. So they destroyed the teeth on the gear and the armature. This boy's lucky. Once he felt a bit of resistance, realised there's something wrong, he stopped. So it was just that needed to be replaced. Now it's not such a common problem that it happens to every one of these Bosch 8 hammers. It's only every once in a while you'd get one of these on. But still, it's always the same fault. So in other words, if you have one of these hammers and you hear any clicking coming from the gearbox, you feel any resistance or it doesn't seem right, get it checked out. To fix that problem, it costs about 170 to 200 euro. If you also destroy your armature, you can add on an extra 250 onto that price. And if you also destroy a lot of the seals inside and it needs a full service kit, you can add on another 80 for that again. So if you hear anything wrong with these machines, get it checked out. Or you can easily check it yourself. Pull off the handle, pull off this rubber cap, pull off the sleeve, undo the screw and just pull off this plastic cover. You can turn that armature by hand then. Turn it a few times and if you hear any resistance clicking, grinding, Get that checked out. Anyway, that's her. Right, next up is a Bosch GSH11E. This is the last of the hammers. An old favourite, but this one's not actually that old. 2021. This thing's actually younger than the last hammer, the GBH8. That was 2020. This is 2021. 
clearly had a rough life. What's wrong with it? That must be what's wrong with it. There we go. Right, she's hammering anyway. But sometimes the motor's not coming. There we go. Got a motor problem running sometimes and not other times. That might be why. Looks like the brushes are gone. Yeah. No pun. No, pans on that one. There are two different brushes in the one machine. That's the way some of them are sold. Two different coloured leads on it. It's because one is a pop out pan. Once this runs down so far, pan will pop out. Push this brush away from the armature, stopping the machine. This one with the brass lead doesn't have a pan. That's the one that's actually worn down more. So if that runs all the way down to the lead, which it's starting to do, that can actually damage the armature. So if you see these Bosches with the red light coming on, make sure you change the brushes. All I need for this one might just be a set of brushes. That's the number there. If you ever need a set, even sounds okay. I see this newer one actually has a different brush holder. It's now black like the old GSH-10. Probably the exact same part, just a different colour. I'll give it a wee blow out anyway before we continue. Hopefully that's all the problem is anyway. If it still keeps doing the same thing after changing the brushes. And then stop on if you turn it a certain orientation. We'll then be looking at the field. Now, common thing for the 11E because of the shape of the brush holder. They don't always go on. Even after blowing this out with an air compressor. You just have to tick them out as well. It's on side because they have these little slots, little pieces of grit and stone you can get wedged onto the wee slots. That'll actually stop the brush from going on. It's fine. The brush is already in there and the machine's running. Any bits that get in are always up here. They never interfere with the brush, but once you take it out and we bits drop on a little bit further, 
and snag the brush. She'll just snag in it as the brush goes down, catching a wee bit of grit and won't go down fully. So if you change the brushes in this machine and you switch it on and it's still doing nothing, make sure those brushes are going down the full way. They're sticking up at all because they're snagging a wee bit of grit. Pull them out, clean them fully, put them back in again and that should solve the problem. Well, because this bottom bearing isn't supported, the cover's gone, there's nothing supporting the motor, it can flap about. Because she can flap about her a little bit, you can tell if the brush is making contact. So if you move it up and down, the brush should go up and down as well, along with the armature. If you move the armature and the brush doesn't move, it's because it's not making contact. If you go and put it together again, she's not going to run. That one was jammed. We'll also just clean this one. Not as bad. Now, the bearing's bad as well, it sounds rough. There's a metal shielded one so it runs a little bit freer. If that's grouting or slack or anything, replace that as well. Generally it wouldn't be unusual to actually replace this bearing once or twice before needing to replace this needle bearing up in here or give the machine a full service. So if you think that's bad, just replace it as well. Hopefully, BIOS. Don't over tighten that nut either, otherwise you'll never get it off the next time. And that should do for this GSH11E. That's her. Four Bosch hammers up and running again. GSH11E, Bosch. 845D, a 538 and a 540. Two of them got a service, one got a repair gear and this one just got a set of brushes. Hope you've enjoyed this longer video folks. Sorry I haven't been putting up as money, I haven't got time lately. Hopefully I get a few more coming shortly. And I hope you're enjoying the channel, I hope you're enjoying these tool repair videos. If you're liking them, make sure to give us a wee like and a follow down below there. And as well, you can help the channel out if you want to leave a wee comment or hit the notification button if you could. If you want to actually support the channel, you can actually become members as well. Thanks for watching, folks. Chat to you later.